Well, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Brian Archie and I am with the Breast and Prostate Peer Education Program here at Niagara Falls Memorial Medical Center. We are a grant funded program through the New York State Department of Health and our mandate is to educate men in the community on benefits of speaking with their doctors in regards to their prostate health. September is Prostate Cancer Awareness Month so we just wanted to share a small bit of information with the general public as to what we can do to better uh, help along our health and wellness. So I'll discuss with you briefly uh, signs, symptoms, and risks of prostate cancer. So some of the simple signs that men may experience will be uh, urinating frequently at night or having an inability to fully relieve themselves when using the bathroom. There could be pain in the back, pelvis, and or hip area, blood in the urine or semen, or even uh, sexual issues such as uh, painful ejaculation. Many of these things will go ignored or sometimes men will attempt to self-medicate Again, have a conversation with your doctor. Risk factors. Who's at risk? So we don't hear as much about prostate cancer as we do about breast health. And I believe that's because it's really unreported, right? But who's at risk? Men ages 55 to 69. While prostate cancer does not discriminate, black men and men with a family history are diagnosed at one and a half times the rate of their white counterparts. Men with a family history which consists of a father, brother, or son that has been diagnosed with prostate cancer. If that is the case in your family, men should be having a conversation with their doctor 10 years prior to that individual's diagnosis. It gives them the opportunity, again, to, to speak about uh, the family history and figure out what the best methods of treatment would be for them. Screening methods are very simple. Uh, it consists of a test called the PSA, which stands for prostate-specific antigen, and it's a simple blood test that the doctor can perform or nurse um, within the office, usually on a yearly visit, if your doctor is really being thorough. Again, if you have any questions, we strongly urge have a conversation with your doctor. I would like to say that I myself am a prostate cancer survivor. I was diagnosed at about uh, I was the age of 43. And so I am roughly four years uh, outside of uh, surgery that I had. I had something called a prostatectomy, so my prostate has been removed. I will tell you um, from my own experience that it was definitely scary uh, at the beginning. Most of us will ponder about the negative um, side effects instead of what me having the procedure would actually do for my overall health and well-being which means essentially my ability to continue living and living a fruitful life. Um, I will tell you that uh, recovery time varies dependent on A, me following the instructions that the doctor gives, and, and B, the amount of effort that I'm actually putting into, into um, becoming uh, better. And when I say better, I mean being more healthy and being more well. Um, I am here today to say that prostate cancer is not a death sentence. It does not stop one's life. Um, it actually uh, helps to place a different focus on um, what we should be doing as a community to continue to thrive and support our family and loved ones. So with that said, I would just like each and every one of you to remember that just because September is Prostate Cancer Awareness Month, this is something that we should be talking about all the time. So men, and the wives of men, and friends of men, if you do not have a doctor, I strongly urge you to get one. And after you get one, we, we need you to go see him, right? That's the only way that we can become informed. The internet doesn't tell us everything. Two, change your diet. Just add some fruits and vegetables. Let's lessen the red meat and get, eat a little bit healthier. That'll not just help our, our uh, chances of not getting prostate cancer, but some other issues such as diabetes and heart issues. Let's become a little bit more physically active. We know it's football season and everybody wants to couch it for about 12 hours a day. Let's take a walk during halftime, 20 minutes or so. Helps improve our health and wellness. If we are smoking, we do strongly urge everyone to smoke less as lung cancer is the number one killer um, in, in our country when it, we start to talk about cancers. And maintaining a healthy weight. That is based upon the individual. 
but obviously if you're you know suffering back issues and things of that nature it may be uh, in our best interest to shed a few pounds just to make sure that we're being as mobile as we can possibly be we're just being mindful of ourselves to be mindful of our community